Uh, thank you very much, Rukilo, so, uh, for organizers uh, to giving me opportunity to talk today, and uh, thank you all for um, uh, staying here. Um, there is a wonderful conference, and uh, I also want to thank the previous speakers, uh, Wolf, uh, Christiane, Martin, Jose, Rukilo, so for bringing up uh, this topic of uh, uh, biology and medicine. And uh, this is the uh, kind of uh, kind of, so trying to give you an overview of what uh, we're doing at Texas A&M and to give you some perspective uh, uh, from my point of view, okay, so where uh, this field is going. OK. So theory, of course, uh, expects you okay, well, so to have all these the quantum skiers. Uh, so if you try to do it in experiment, uh, so you have uh, likely uh, something else, the slightly different outcome. Well, so this is always the case, okay, well, so that's why, okay, well, so I'm taking it a pragmatic view of quantum mechanics or biology, trying to understand, okay, well, so what we can learn from that and see how we can benefit from the ideas uh, that they are currently being there. So why quantum biophysics? So really, okay, well, so uh, we're treating a uh, living system as the black box uh, where most of this is there. Uh, um, so, but the uh, living system, okay, well, so is uh, mostly explored by biologists. They, they know everything, okay, well, so they do experiments. Uh, as a result of this experiment, they get some unusual results. And this is how they come up with all these crazy ideas which involve uh, uh, quantum coherence, uh, super radiance, okay, well, so just name it. Okay, well, so really, okay, well, so each time, okay, well, so they can't explain things they, uh, in a simple, classical manner, okay, well, so are they using quantum ideas, okay, well, so without she really paying attention to what they mean. On the other hand, okay, well, so they're um, medical doctors, and she, they're pretty conservative people, okay, well, so, and she, um, they are trying to uh, do the, their best job in treating people, but she, unfortunately, okay, well, so it's a very complicated task, and she, that's why, okay, well, so whenever, okay, well, so they fail, they um, are open to new ideas, and she, uh, things like uh, quantum health, okay, well, so in this case, okay, well, so it's uh, the name of the company. Okay, well, so it's also uh, comes the uh, pretty health. Okay, so basically, okay, well, so we understand, okay, well, so where uh, um, biologists and medicine actually, okay, well, so uh, willing to talk to us about the quantum ideas. So question is, okay, well, so quantum medicine actually possible? Well, so this is the kind of my dream job, okay, well, so is the uh, trying to build see, some kind of uh, quantum control loop, okay, well, so, and we heard a wonderful talk today about the quantum control ideas. We will not go uh, to the details, and uh, I will not uh, tell you that it's uh, feasible right away, but the uh, one point that I want to bring is that uh, with efficient control, good sensors are needed, and uh, probably, okay, well, so this is uh, the most likely application of uh, the next generation of uh, quantum devices in medicine is the better uh, sensor and imaging system. So fundamental questions is always, okay, well, so is that we're trying to understand the uh, basic mechanisms by which the uh, biological system is driven. So we go uh, from organs and cells uh, to um, uh, molecules, and that's where, okay, well, so uh, we uh, meet quantum mechanics. Uh, um, so at smaller scale, quantum mechanics obviously is involved, and then we're, we're trying to go back and she try to understand, okay, well, so the origin of diseases, the, so um, somewhere, okay, well, so we lose the, this the notion of quantum mechanics, and she, so it's the really, okay, well, so we want to understand where it's getting lost. And she, uh, really, okay, well, so the notion of quantum mechanics uh, uh, is the pretty old, and it's not coming from Schrodinger, okay, well, so in 43, so it's not coming from Einstein, who was the, who was considering, okay, well, so uh, physics to describe living systems, but they quickly realized the, how primitive physics is there, uh, also, and it's still uh, valid there. Uh, but the really, okay, well, so uh, quantum theory, okay, well, so came of, uh, um, in biology, okay, well, so first came in 1919, it was so when uh, John Jolie described the, uh, the uh, origin of color vision uh, using quantum theory. At that time, the electric effect uh, um, was already been known. Okay. 
So just a quick reminder, uh, age bar is zero, okay, so it's the building of NIH, and she, uh, despite the fact that uh, most of the medical imaging modalities are using uh, quantum methods, uh, uh, quantum mechanics, uh, so it's really okay, also nobody uh, seriously talks about the uh, quantum. And she, there is an obvious reason for that. So biologists think that uh, uh, evolution was uh, uh, for 3.5 billion years, and uh, if nature have not designed the uh, quantum biology uh, or quantum human by that time, okay, well, so that means uh, there is a reason for that. So chemistry uh, take uh, um, a simple approach. They pretty much say that uh, 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 quantum doesn't exist because it's warm, okay, well, so it's wet and wiggly, or W cube, uh, and see, pretty much only physicists think that at the end, see, quantum mechanics provides the most uh, accurate description of uh, the world around. So what's the, uh, the real truth? The truth is that the, um, also probably we can also quantum mechanics uh, plays in a role. And uh, this is just the uh, Wikipedia web page also showing metabolic pathways uh, in uh, just the one of the systems there. So you see it's uh, pretty messy and biology is very smart. Uh, so Really, we also we designed uh, our system in such ways so that there are many pathways, and if uh, one pathway doesn't work, so the other one opens up, and so on and so on. So there is a, a reasonable um, a way, to, uh, reasonable way of thinking is that she, one of those pathways is actually employing quantum mechanics, and she, it's really okay, also it's a question of okay, also when uh, these the um, uh, mechanism opens up for us. So in some sense, okay, well, so you think about this, okay, well, so it actually opens up for uh, quantum medicine, okay, well, so because uh, whenever, okay, well, so you're pretty much dying, okay, well, so and your organism is going uh, to the last resource, so that's maybe, okay, well, so something that uh, can potentially help. So this is the, um, something to think about, see, but the, um, also just summarizing, okay, so there are several established areas of quantum biology. So I will not go through these details, but uh, please look at uh, the bottom note uh, and the, from the point of NIH, uh, National Institute of Health, so nothing of this is physiologically significant. So that means not, that nothing of these okay, also allows you to diagnose and treat diseases, and uh, this is the, the major problem. Okay, so NIH is very custom-oriented agency, so um, if you can't prove that it's uh, useful for them, okay, also, sorry, no money. Okay, so um, we're talking about quantum brain. Okay, so there were several uh, talks today, okay, also, and really, okay, also, goes back to Michelangelo. Um, also, if you notice that uh, God is actually not in cave, but uh, inside the brain, okay, also, so really, okay, also, is the, their quantum communication inside the brain. And I think this uh, uh, idea came from this 1994 paper of uh, Hamarov and uh, Penrose. Uh, it's kind of interesting marriage uh, in this paper of uh, medical doctor and the uh, mathematician. So when he came up with this idea, he was so rather speculative that the microtubules, which consist of uh, uh, those, the uh, polymers the of uh, tubulin, he was so, uh, can perform this uh, quantum communication. So uh, microtubules by itself is a very interesting object. So it's uh, abandoned inside the cells. Uh, so in this uh, case, okay, well, so human cells are shown green. Uh, 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 green fluorescence shows you the location of microtubules. You see there are plenty of those. They are relatively small, 20 nanometers in diameter, can be uh, several micron in length, and it's very dynamic. And so they are constantly polymerized, depolarized, and the, um, it's, it's an interesting system. So um, I was lucky enough that the DARPA at certain point decided to put certain amount of money to see if uh, communication between cells uh, happens uh, through those microtubules, and the, uh, they wanted to see if it uh, happens in gigahertz range, you give also, well, so uh, just uh, um, to tell you up front that uh, uh, they don't communicate uh, through gigahertz, uh, uh, so we failed on this, but it allowed us to explore potential resonances in this. 
So basically, we came also with Air Force Lab, we came also, they built a uh, special device for this, we came also for RF exposure of cells, tissues, and the, in this case, microtubules. Uh, so the idea was we came also just to see how uh, microtubules interact uh, with uh, these uh, Giger electric fields. Uh, and see, um, there are plenty of scientific questions to be asked, uh, but uh, we just decided to explore this. Um, we want to use the uh, non-invasive techniques to do that. Uh, we use Raman spectroscopy and to look for some changes and not expecting too much, to be honest. So um, this is just Raman spectrum of water. Okay, also, uh, many of you are familiar, except that okay, also is uh, uh, plotted in a uh, logarithmic scale. Okay, also just reflecting that we need really high dynamic range to see all some differences. So we add the uh, microtubules into the solution to see that, okay, well, so indeed, okay, well, so we see spectrum of these microtubules. We turn on uh, radio frequency to see what happens. This is uh, like first surprise. So first surprise, we see that, okay, well, so we see all of a sudden the buildup of low frequency vibrations in microtubules um, when uh, we are on resonance with these microtubules. So relatively modest electric fields, okay, well, so here it has frequencies, so what happens when we go off it? So all of a sudden, okay, so we see disappearance of these low frequency vibrations, but we see structural changes in water, okay, also, which manifested in uh, uh, the re uh, Raman resonances, which are, are related to that. But what's going on here? Okay, also, it's really, okay, also, it took us several years okay, also, to realize that that's actually water is getting affected by radio frequency. So we can repeat these uh, measurements uh, for uh, on resonance and the resonance for microtubule is getting pretty much the same result. Okay, well, so there is some structural change of the force. So um, then, okay, well, so um, we can go off resonance with water, okay, well, so where water is uh, not really interacting with RF, okay, well, so we see pretty much no result. So it's really, okay, well, so it's interaction of RF with water which causes this structural difference. So what's going on? So apparently, okay, well, so in theory, um, uh, people have uh, speculated about the, the existence of these the, uh, water clusters, but uh, everyone thought that it is spontaneously rising water. So um, also there are lots of uh, theories behind that. Okay, well, so, but this was the very first demonstration that we can actually achieve those the quantum domains of water, okay, well, so using this uh, uh, gigahertz excitation. And actually, okay, well, so theorists went as far away as they, they predicted that vibrational spectrum will change. And so, uh, we roughly observed what the theorists predicted. So we are pretty confident at this point that uh, we were able to do that. So with all these development, we actually okay, also developed a very interesting tool, okay, also, which allowed us uh, uh, to do something that uh, is really okay, also, uh, difficult to do in any other way. So okay, also, label free drug and drug because we brought this Raman microscopy to the level of uh, sensitivity, which allowed us uh, to look at the uh, drug interactions with uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, the protein-protein interactions, and uh, things like that. But it's all classical method. Can we do something with the quantum methods? Uh, and uh, the first uh, thing that uh, you want to explore is the quantum correlation. So this is how we came with this idea of counting molecules in meters in this, uh, your focal volume. So it's actually, okay, well, so it's not a trivial task if you think about this, okay, well, so because the, no matter how tight you focus your light, the, well, so there will be still more than one molecule out there. So the question is how you can use quantum measurements to do that. So uh, the idea was that, okay, well, so why don't we just uh, look uh, at the statistics of uh, the light emitted by this and see we actually were able to estimate this. You need to see quite a lot of number of measurements, uh, so roughly 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6, uh, in order to be able to count uh, uh, those molecules, but uh, we are able to do that. Then we ask this question, okay, well, so can we actually distinguish different molecules? And apparently, okay, well, so we can do this uh, as well, okay, well, so, so except that, okay, well, so for each additional uh, um, molecule that we want to distinguish, you roughly need additional uh, five orders of magnitude for uh, those type of measurements, but uh, it's uh, still possible. So now the question is, okay, so can we actually improve our classical measurements uh, using quantum light? 
And this is okay. Also, uh, what we were doing for the last ten years. Okay, also the Guardian uh, recently acknowledged this as one of the biggest design stories of 2022. So we used the uh, what is called the uh, Brewer microscopy. So where we uh, shine uh, monochromatic light the, on a sample, look at the uh, inelastic scattering, and by looking at the uh, the frequency shift and the the line width, we can actually get the uh, elasticity and viscosity measurements uh, in a biological system, and it works extremely well. Okay, well, so this is the okay, well, so uh, cells in soft and the stiff environment. We turn this the uh, uh, real light contrast, and you immediately see cells in stiff uh, uh, environment. The cells they get stiffer, so red color means they are the, uh, uh, stiff. Unfortunately, okay, so cells don't like high power. So um, 10 milliwatt of power is enough to kill those cells, and we can monitor these okay, also by looking at uh, viscoelastic properties as well. So what's the solution? Solution is quantum light spectroscopy, and uh, we generate squeeze light to do that. So we use the stimulated Brillat spectroscopy in this case, and the, um, so by uh, using quantum light, the, we can actually achieve uh, the reduction of noise. That allows us to increase the contrast measurements, and she, I think this is a okay, so really okay, so the future for uh, many of these microscopic techniques that uh, you can achieve this quantum advantage, which allows you to use the less light uh, to uh, get the uh, much higher contrast duration. So we can actually do cancer cell imaging, okay, so increase contrast there. Okay, well, so we uh, see that uh, we actually induce less uh, photo damage using quantum light. We can even image the brain, okay, well, so of course it's drosophila brain, okay, well, so it's the only millimeter larger, okay, well, so, but uh, still we can achieve uh, uh, better contrast using uh, quantum light. So what else? So the problem is that okay, well, so, uh, we know that the uh, scattering okay, well, so, uh, is not particularly friendly to uh, quantum properties of light. And we heard a beautiful talk by Louis de Yiddish, uh, was talking about environmental induced sudden death of entanglement. Well, so someone will say, "Oh, okay, well, so this is bad." Okay, well, so uh, I'll turn this uh, turn this uh, argument around and then say, "Okay, well, so this is actually very good." Okay, well, so and I'll explain you very briefly. So basically, okay, well, so if you are using uh, optical microscopy methods, in particular optical co uh, coherence tomography, so you typically use the like coherence properties of light to uh, get your signal so that. Uh, uh, you are not polluted with uh, scattered light. So why not use entanglement for this? And actually, okay, well, so just recently we demonstrated this. Okay, well, so, uh, we use it to LIDAR system okay, well, so, uh, to uh, demonstrate the proof of principle that uh, quantum entanglement actually helps you to do that. But uh, we are currently moving to microscopy system. And uh, in uh, uh, this case, okay, well, so we show that uh, quantum entanglement allows you okay, also to reduce this uh, scattering at least the order of magnitude to, to achieve a better uh, gating. And she, of course, we get a beautiful ink. So in summary, okay, well, so I hope I convince you that the quantum biology is not a new frontier, but the instrumentation development the, uh, makes it look uh, sexy, okay, well, so uh, generates more hype, and she, uh, makes the things the more interesting. Absorbing quantum effects in biological system is a non-trivial task, and uh, especially if you are looking for effects uh, which have any physiological significance. Quantum optics, on the other hand, provides you with new methods of absorbing and controlling biological systems, and allows you to improve sensitivity, specificity, and spatial resolution, which is actually okay. Also, biologists are really looking for. So there are plenty of needs there. We need better light sources, better detectors. The and so on, and most importantly, if you're really serious about the uh, uh, biologists and medical doctors listening to you, you demonstrate and need to demonstrate something which has a potential impact. Well, so at the end, I just want to acknowledge uh, uh, all my group members uh, who contributed to this book, and uh, thank you very much for your attention.